This video is part of CAE Associates' ANSYS eLearning series. CAE Associates is an engineering consulting firm in Middlebury, Connecticut, specializing in finite element analysis and computational fluid dynamics. We have been an ANSYS channel partner since 1985 and have developed our ANSYS eLearning series to help you maximize your software investment. Please visit our website, which includes an extensive resource library with over 250 items and counting in an easily searchable area. We also invite you to visit our Engineering Advantage blog, where we share insights from our many years of performing engineering analysis. CAE Associates also offers an extensive schedule of ANSYS courses taught at our Millbury office. If you need help deciding on the best courses to take for your application, visit our CAE University page. The complete library of e-learning recordings is available for viewing in our resource library and also on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash C-A-E-A-I. All right, the objective of this seminar is to provide you with an overview of the Engineering Data Manager and also to demonstrate the procedure for using the Engineering Data Manager to enter, store, view, organize, and import material property data. Why do we need to learn this? Well, the most obvious reason is because you have to enter material property data for your uh, analysis, but you can also use the, data, the Engineering Data Manager to organize your material property data and to share your material property data. You can store that data in material libraries and those libraries can be shared out to other users or you can use them in other projects. Ultimately, um, the goal is to speed up your analysis process and to improve your workflow. What is the Engineering Data Manager? I'm sure most of you know what it is. Um, you've probably used it to enter material properties for your workbench projects. It's a tool for defining, storing, and organizing material property data. You can use properties stored in material libraries. and Those material libraries can be pre-existing libraries that are ANSYS-defined libraries, or you can actually take material data that you've entered and store them in your own libraries. Um, and you can use those libraries in other workbench projects. What I want to do now quickly is just open up a poll and see, find out from you what you're using the Engineering Data Manager for. So you should see a poll that I brought up. And what I'm asking is, which features of the Engineering Data Manager do you use now? And you can check as many of these boxes as you want, um, and I'll give you about a minute to answer, and then I'll share the results with everyone. And once we get through the poll, I'll uh, and review those results, I'll move on to the demonstration. Okay. Let me share those results with everyone. As you would expect, the uh, majority of responses uh, say that they use it to enter, enter new material property data, and that's required for any analysis, that that's the way you enter your properties. 36% uh, import material properties from existing libraries. That's good. 18% um, don't use it at all, so I suspect they're not using uh, workbench at the moment uh, because otherwise they would have to use it to enter property data. Surprisingly, 0% use it to store properties for use in other projects or so that others can use them. So one of the things I want to get across in this seminar is uh, that you can use them for, um, for material property storage and for sharing material properties. Okay. Now I want to move on to the demonstration part of it. And 
And I'm going to bring up a model of a fan. And the fan model contains two parts. It contains the fan portion and the case. And I want to assign custom aluminum properties, which are temperature dependent. I want to assign those to the fan portion of the model. And then in the case, what I want to do is import um, some base properties from an existing library and then modify those properties. OK. What I have here is my project page. And this is a, um, a linked steady state thermal static structural analysis. You see at the top of the steady state thermal table, I have engineering data. So this is where I, want to def I can define my material properties. So to get into the engineering data page, I just double click on that item. Brings me into the engineering data page. There are several components to this page. The one in the middle at the top is the engineering data table. And this displays, displays all the materials that can be used in this particular project. Then beneath that, <clears throat> for each material that I have highlighted here, it's going to list the, um, the detailed property information. Now, this structural steel property is a default property that's available for all, for all projects. And you notice down below the, the default unit system for that is, um, is metric. Now, I can easily switch that unit system. If I go up to the toolbar at the top, the units pull down menu, switch it to US customary, for example. And you'll see down in the units column, it switches it. All right. There's a toolbox field or toolbox uh, uh, window on the left, and this is where you can add additional property items to your uh, to your materials. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. What I'm going to do is I want to add my own custom properties. So first of all, I'm going to add the aluminum properties. So I'll just call I'll give that a name here. I highlight this row in the engineering data table. I'll call it aluminum one. And you notice I have a question mark here, and that's because I don't have any properties defined for that material. What I want to do is I want to add properties that are required for my uh, thermal structural analysis. So I'm going to highlight density, include property. I want to highlight a coefficient of thermal expansion so I can account for the thermal strains. So the standard uh, value for that is secant coefficient of thermal expansion, right click, property for that one. Then I want to add isotropic elasticity. That's the basic property required to enter the stiffness values for the structural portion of the model. So I right click, include property there. And then I'll also add thermal conductivity, which is required for the steady state thermal analysis. Right click, include property. You'll notice in the property detail properties table, I have a bunch of question marks here. And that's because I don't have, you can see here in the B column, I have a bunch of yellow fields. And that means that I need to enter data for, that, for those uh, properties. So what I'll do here, <clears throat> under density, I'm going to add a value of 0.1 pounds per cubic inch. For thermal expansion, I'll enter a value of 1.28, even minus 5 inches per inch degree Fahrenheit. And you need to enter a reference temperature here. And that's the base temperature at which those thermal expansion coefficients were calculated. That's typically the room temperature, typically room temperature. Isotropic elasticity. A standard way to enter that data is, is uh, by entering the Young's modulus and the Poisson's ratio. Now, for this, I want to I want to enter temperature-dependent properties. All right. Now, the temperature range that I have here, I should cover the range of applied temperatures in the model. So, if I look in the upper right corner of of my window, I have uh, let me click on isotropic elasticity here. I have a table, and this allows me to enter the properties as a function of temperature. 
So I'll start with room, t room temperature value. And then let's say I have two additional temperature points, let's say 400 degrees. And I want to make sure I cover my full range of temperatures. So I'll go all the way to the max applied temperature of 750. Now your data may be, uh, have different data points, in which case you'd want to enter those. Young's modulus values at each temperature. Room temperature is 10, 10 million PSI. 400 degree value of 9 million. And 750 degree value of 6 million. Poisson's ratio has to be entered for the same temperature points. And that typically doesn't change with temperature. So I'm just going to enter the same value for each temperature point. OK, if I highlight the Young's modulus column, you'll notice down at the bottom right corner, it shows a nice graph of the modulus uh, variation with temperature. So this window in the lower right corner is always displaying your, um, your uh, property values, or essentially what you entered in the table above. It's displaying down in the graph below. All right, then we need to enter our isotropic thermal conductivity value. And that could be temperature dependent or it could be constant. So if I highlight that one, I'll enter some temperature points there as well. Those temperature values don't have to correspond to the temperature points in my other tables. So room temperature, let's say my second point is at 300 and my third point is at 800. And I enter the associated uh, conductivity values. 0.0021. 0026 and 0 0.0029. Okay, and again, it plots, in this case, the thermal conductivity versus temperature in the lower right corner. Okay, so my aluminum properties are now fully defined. I can actually give it a description in the, uh, D, the D column in the engineering data table if I want. I can uh, type in anything I want here. <coughs> And you notice for structural steel, it gives the literature uh, information about the literature source, um, which contains that data. In this case, I'll just type in uh, fan material aluminum, or anything I want there. OK. Now for the next property, I'm going to import the property from an existing uh, material library. So to do that, I go into the toolbar up near the top. There's this library icon. If I click on that, that toggles between the engineering data table and the engineering data source table. If I click on that, I, it shows the engineering data source table. And I've got a, a bunch of different material libraries that I can uh, grab material properties from. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a structural steel, a nonlinear structural steel model from the general nonlinear material library. So I click on that one. Down in the next table, it lists each of the materials that are stored in that library. I scroll down a little bit. There's one called structural steel NL. NL stands for nonlinear. In that case, it has some plasticity data or some post-yield property data. To include this material model in my project, I have to click on this plus icon. I'll click on that. That's then going to fill in column C with this book icon. That means that it's been added to the engineering data table so that it, that it can be used in the project. All right. Now if I toggle this engineering data source icon off. I go back to the engineering data table, and you see I have structural, structural steel NL listed in that table. So now it's available for use within my project. I can change the name of this. Let's say I want to customize this um, steel. I can change the name of it. Let's call it Steel 1. And I'm going to tweak the properties a little bit. Um, the only thing I want to change here, actually I'll change a couple of things. The first thing I want to change 
the yield strength and the tangent modulus, I want to make those temperature dependent. So these are the, this is the plasticity data for the, the custom steel. So I highlight that. The table in the upper right corner now has, uh, allows me to enter temperature dependent properties. So I'll put in 70. I'll put in 800 to cover my full temperature range. The yield strength will drop. Put in a value of 30,000 for yield strength at 800 degrees and let's say a tangent modulus of 200,000. Now down below, once I've entered that data, it shows the stress strain curves at the two different temperatures. The other thing I need to add here, I need to add thermal expansion coefficient and thermal conductivity. So I'll go to the upper left in the toolbox, right click on secant coefficient of thermal expansion, include property. And down near the bottom, I want to include the isotropic thermal conductivity. So I right click and include property there. Now you notice I have a question mark because I haven't entered the, the new property data. So coefficient of thermal expansion here, I'll use a value of 0.001 per inch degree Fahrenheit and reference temperature, room temperature. Under isotropic thermal conductivity, I'm going to put in, um, actually, I didn't enter the right value here. For coefficient of thermal expansion, I want to change that to 6 E minus 6. I thought that was too high before. And thermal conductivity of 0.001. Okay, so now my steel one custom steel uh, material is fully defined. What I can do now, let's say I want to save this these two materials because I may want to use those in a different project, or I may want to share these properties with somebody else. I have to save those to a file, uh, and that's effectively saving them to a library file. So I, I can highlight those properties, go to File, and choose Export Engineering Data. I give that file a name. I can call it, say, Fan Materials, and click Save. That's going to save it in an XML file format. Right, if you make that XML file available to other users, they can read that data in as a new material library for their, for their project. Okay, now what I can do, if I have a new project, I'll only have structural steel included in my engineering data table for that project. So if I right-click here and delete these two materials, I can always bring those back in by going to File, Import Engineering Data. I can locate that, that material library file, fanmaterials.xml, and click Open. And that brings those properties back into my engineering data table. Okay. You notice also there's a column C here which is listed as Source. And that shows the, um, the links to the, the library files. In this case, Structural Steel is linked to a general materials library. That's an ANSYS defined library. And then these other two materials are, are the two materials that we created and save those to fanmaterials.xml. OK. Now, if I select Engineering Data Sources to toggle back to my Engineering Data Sources, I also have the option, let me remove that. Um, if this were a new project, I would only have these uh, libraries listed here. So if I want to import a new library that's been created by somebody else, or let's say I created it um, earlier from a different project, what I would have to do is select this icon uh, this button for add an existing data source from a file. 
So you're essentially adding a material library to your project. So I click on that. I find my material library file, and I select Open. All right, so that adds fan materials to my, to my project. Now, let's say, if, if, I'm sorry, if I look in fan materials, it lists two materials, the two materials that I created, steel one and aluminum one. Let's say I want to add another, another material to that library. I could manually add the material to it. If I click on this Edit Library checkbox, I could add a material here. Let's call that Steel 2. And then, of course, I can add properties to, to that material. So I could right-click and choose Include Property for Density. And let me just add a couple of properties here. I'll include isotropic elasticity as well. Put a couple of values in there. Okay, so now Steel 2 is fully defined. Let's say I want to also import uh, a material from another library into this library. So what I'll do is I'll just go to the General Materials Library, and I'll add it to a titanium material. So there's a titanium alloy here. I can highlight it, drag it up to fan materials, and drop it. Now when I select fan materials, I have steel 2 and titanium included there. Okay. Now to save all of this to my fan materials.xml library file, I need to click this save icon here in column C. Okay. Then when I look under source, I have these links that are set up, and I can refresh. If I right-click on the link, I can refresh from the link source, and that's going to set this not equal to link symbol to equal to. So that means it's fully linked. Okay. Um, let's see. All right, one more thing I want to show you here is this favorites uh, option here in the in the data source table. So let's say I wanted to, to make one of these materials available for all of my projects, and I want to make it easily accessible. What I could do is add that material to my favorites list. So all you have to do is select any material from any library. Make sure that library is not in edit mode. So I have to uncheck this edit library box. Okay, often brings up this modifications may have been made to the library uh, window. Do I want to save it? Yes. Then I can drag, say, Steel 2 up to favorites and drop it. Now if I click on favorites, I've got my standard structural steel that's always in there. And now I have a link to uh, that Steel 2 material as well. So if I were to open up a new project and click on Favorites, that Steel 2 would be included in there as well. Um, if somebody else wants to include a library that you created in their projects, all they would have to do is click on this Add an Existing Data Source from File button, and then search for the XML file the library file that you created, and import it. Once it's imported into one project and that project saved, then any project they open from that point forward will include that material library. OK. Um, now I have all of my material properties defined. So to assign those materials, I'm sure a lot of you have done this before, I can go into my mechanical window I have my two parts, my fan part and my case part. If I click on, say, the fan part, down in the details pane under assignment, I have structural steel. 
if I select the right arrow, nothing comes up. So it's not displaying my new materials that I created. So what I have to do is I have to select Model, right-click, and Refresh Materials. Once I do that, I can go back to Fan, right arrow, and apply aluminum to that part, to the fan part. And same with case. So when I click on the case part, I can right click and choose steel one. If I highlight geometry, I can also change the display in the graphics window. I can change the display to show those, those new materials. So under display style, I go to down arrow, material, and now it doesn't look like it changed the colors much, but it, it has this, uh, uh, now it's color coded based on material. Okay. One more thing. There is, in the Engineering Data Manager, there's a filter uh, button up at the top. And if currently that filter button is, is activated, it's turned on. If I turn that off, you'll notice under Toolbox, I have these additional options here for magnetic materials and electric materials. What this is doing is it's filtering based on physics. So it means when this is turned on, it filters out any property data that is not valid for, for the type of analysis you're running. In this case, it's thermal structural, so obviously these uh, magnetic and electric properties are not valid. Okay. I'll answer your questions here in a minute. Uh, let me just go back to the slides here. If you have uh, material properties that you entered into your CAD program, say Inventor, Pro-E, or NX, you can import those um, from the project page. So when you import that geometry, though, those material properties uh, will get imported into the Engineering Data Manager. All right, to conclude, the Engineering Data Manager provides a powerful tool for defining, organizing, and storing your properties. There's a great variety of different material models that are available in the toolbox on the left side. So you can add those to your, your property table. Material data can be stored in libraries. You can use those libraries in other projects, um, either your own projects or other people can access your libraries that you created. So you can share those materials. Properties can be temperature dependent, and they'll be plotted um, in, the, uh, uh, in the graph on the lower right, si the right side of the window. If you want to use materials in your project, you have to make sure you add those materials to your engineering data table. Okay. All right. Um, again, I'll answer your questions here in just a second. I do want to mention that our next webinar here in the series is, this is going to discuss structural element selection. That's going to be next Tuesday and Thursday, the 16th and 18th, and that will be presented by Peter Barrett. Okay. 